many of the skills in management are a little bit more timeless. You know, if you're a really good technical manager, you know, like let's say an engineering manager, the amount of change in the way that you deal with people and scaling and communication between a project 20 years ago and today, there is some change for sure. The world's changed, but it's not nearly the amount of change as in the tech stacks. So, are you getting to that point in your career where you're starting to wonder, is it time for me to switch from being a programmer in DevOps, some kind of individual contributor tech role into management? Shudder the thought, but we often get to this point in our career where we start to wonder, maybe it is time. Now, not everybody is cut out to be a manager. You may have even heard the advice that all programmers have to become a manager at some point in their career. And I don't necessarily think that's true. I think there's a lot of paths we can grow in our career other than management. But let's just talk today about, are there some signs that you're starting to see in your career that maybe management is the right move for you so you can decide if it's time to do it now or if maybe it's not time and you should just keep doing what you're doing or look for a different direction to go in your career. So the first sign that it may be time to consider switching into management is you find yourself more concerned with people than technology. Now, I have to caveat this a little bit. If you're at a point in your career where you find yourself really interested in, let's say, agile or continuous delivery or test-driven development, DevOps, a lot of these practices that we use to improve the way people work together on software projects, certainly being into that can help you out if you want to move into management. But what I mean by this point is that actually it really bothers you when you start to feel like the way the company is set up, the way that the engineering department, let's say, is structured or treated, the way that the business works. You just kind of look around at the company and you look at really your career and you start to really feel like there's something about the industry or jobs you've worked at where the way that the people are treated or the way they work together and treat each other isn't as good as it could be. And you know, you heard in many of my other episodes how I've shared that I've been in some really politically nasty situations at companies sometimes, and it's taught me to try to understand more about human nature, what motivates people, and really allowed me to learn a lot of management skills that I used often as a management consultant or just a, a technology consultant. But if you start to find that, you know, a significant portion of your day or maybe even the hours outside of work, you're really bothered by the way that people treat each other. And you'd like to maybe think about how could I improve just the way people work together and the way that people are measured and the way that people are motivated and smooth that out and just have it be a better culture or environment for everyone. That's one sign that maybe there's somebody give you a few here. Maybe it's time for you to switch into management. The second sign it may be time to switch into management is you want more organizational insight. When we are an individual contributor on a project or at a company, we tend to be kind of compartmentalized a bit, right? There's, there, we're shielded, so to speak, from a lot of the other things that are going on at the company. You know, when you're working on a software product, and I can only share my experience, I feel like we kind of get this uh, false sense of understanding that we know what the company's goals are, what sort of the roadmap and plans for the company, you know, are because of just our limited view of sort of what we're building in the software product. We look at the backlog, you know, again, if you're using Scrum or something like that, we look at like new features being built and we sort of project, oh, I see where the company is going. But realistically, and I've just learned this over the years, you know, as, as a developer in DevOps and in infrastructure, you know, if you're even a team lead, what, you know, in these different roles, we often are, you know, much later in the point of the company's sort of sharing of information than people that are, let's say, in marketing or in sales or in upper management or middle management. So 
if you get to a point in your career where it starts to feel like, you know, I don't like finding out that the company is changing direction or finding out about a new, you know, a direction we want to go with partnering with another company or how we're, you know, adopting AI at the company late, you know, when I don't have any say in it, I'd like to really have a say in the direction of the company or just be more involved and be more aware, you know, having more insight to the business and the organization. Actually, that desire is a sign that maybe, again, the combination of all these I'm going to go through, it may be time for you to consider moving into management. The third sign that maybe it's time to move into management is you get to a point where you are just so tired of the technical interview process. You know, you probably know that when Google first started exploding, you know, in the early 2000s, they had so many people from all over the world applying for jobs there that if you were a recruiter at Google, your life was hell. And they had to figure out a way to weed out a lot of people that weren't basically ultimately the best, you know, let's say developers for Google. And so they really came up with a strategy. Hey, let's have an interview process that is so hard and that you'd literally have to like practice algorithms for fun on the weekend, you know, outside of your job because you're so obsessed with technology to pass this interview. And Unfortunately, after that, what did a lot of the rest of the industry do? They started to follow suit and they went, oh, we'll be like Google. We'll, you know, create these technical interviews that require all this algorithm crunching and things that honestly you learn in college, but you often never use them or very rarely pass that point. And if you have been in the industry for a while, your experience has been anything like mine, it's really ridiculous because the further you get in your career you get on harder projects you have to spend more of your time learning tech on the job that's very specific to the problem you're solving the project you're trying to you know get out the door and you've got no time to be crunching algorithms and so if all of a sudden you lose your job or you think it's time to leave and get a new job you're suddenly put in this position where like you have to hit the books sacrifice more of your work-life balance it pisses off your family honestly it's just an unfair expectation and now you're competing against people who sometimes are nowhere near as qualified for a more senior position but they just happen to have more recently tested you know or come out of college or something like that now i know this is this is a Huge problem. I'm not the only person who's talked about this. This has been a problem for like the last 15 years. But if you've gotten to a point in your career where you just can't stand the thought of this treadmill of I got to take a job and then as soon as I get ready to move on to the next one, I got to cram, test all this stuff, all these algorithms, you know, hacker rank, leak code. Plus, I got to learn, you know, the latest stuff about the technology, you know, and you can honestly start to feel like you're drowning in constant relearning. That can be a frustrating enough thing that once you've proven to yourself, hey, I've been in the software industry, I've worked on real projects, I've written lots of code, I've loved this part of my career, you know, I provided for myself or my family, I've proven to myself I can be a developer, I am a developer, I know what it's like to learn a few different programming languages, I've been on multiple projects. There's nothing wrong with if you decide, and this is a personal decision for everyone, but if you decide, hey, I've had enough. This isn't, this doesn't feel grow, like growth to me. This doesn't feel like a challenge. I'm not actually getting rewarded the further I get in my career. In some ways, it can feel like you're getting punished the further you move in your career just due to the nature of the hiring and interview process. So if that bothers you a lot and you just want to stop dealing with it, moving into a management position, the interview process is way less technical. It's way more person based. It's way more experience based. It's more about scenarios between people, you know, how you deal with conflict, how maybe you would you would measure or mentor people. And if you know the idea of that being the type of interview interview that you have to go through when you get a new job is appealing to you, that could be a sign it's time to switch into management. The fourth sign that it may be time to switch into management is that you really want to work less overtime. Now, there are some managers who may be watching this episode right now, this could be you, 
who are thinking, Jamie, I'm a manager and I work more overtime than anybody else on my team. And my opinion is that whether you're an individual contributor or a manager, we all can choose to say no. We can choose to what amount of hours we're going to work you know, during the day when people have expectations of us and we just don't have the time or it's just unrealistic. We get to decide when enough is enough. That's setting a boundary right now. There can be circumstance, uh, uh, consequences. The worst consequence could be I told my boss that I'm not going to work past, you know, a certain number of hours and they're really frustrated. And so they fired me. That's an extreme case. Uh, but ultimately, as a manager, you're responsible for making yourself really available for people. I'm going to make a future episode, by the way, that's about some of the key skills that I think people who shift from being an individual contributor into management need to really focus on and think about. And unfortunately, I work with a lot of managers who don't do this. So, so look out for that. It won't be my next episode after this, but it might be a few after that. But just the nature of being a developer when you estimate work, which I know not everybody does, but let's say you estimate, I think you know when something's going to take longer than your estimate, you know, you can negotiate scope, you can try to do things so that you don't have to work overtime. But often as a developer, we're very pushed or encouraged or sometimes even forced to keep our job to work overtime to hit these original commitments. And that's something that managers don't typically have to deal with. Now, if you're in a technical management position where you're, you know, leading a team, you're maybe not the key developer, but you're supposed to be available to everyone and it's after hours and a ton of people are working overtime and you got to be there too. Well, yeah, you're going to probably be working some overtime too. But, you know, I, I think if you've gotten to that point where you're so tired of estimating work being micromanaged by you know how long how much is done being asked questions forced to slice stuff into smaller tasks and play the whole tetris task game and scrum if you're subject to that you know getting into management will remove you from that now there's some other things that management will add to you that you'll be responsible for that for some people are worse and some people are better but if you want to get out of that, you know, micromanagement, estimating overtime pressure game, management is a way to possibly not have to deal with that. And the fifth sign that it may be time to move into management is you're tired of learning new technology. This sounds like almost blasphemy in the face of a programmer or a technologist, you know, like you may be, but we can all get to a point in our career where we're like, I'm just not as excited as I was when I started out about new tech. You know, me at this point in my career, I've learned so many JavaScript frameworks, C Sharp frameworks, you know, Python, Ruby on Rails, business intelligence, you know, tons of integration, third party APIs, all kinds of databases, NoSQL, regular. I mean, I've, I've worked with all three of the cloud platforms. I've gotten to this point and I was like this before I got exposed to all this, where I was just kind of like, I like working with technology, but I don't like the feeling that every couple years, everything I just worked so hard to learn is now not of any value and I got to start all over again. And that sort of like loss of the investment that you've made and constantly having to reinvent and relearn, you know, I think for many people, we get to a point in our career, and this could be you, where that doesn't make economic sense anymore. And so if you'd like to instead learn something new that'll increase your value in the marketplace in a different role and you can maintain what you've learned, you know, management, many of the skills in management are a little bit more timeless. You know, if you're a really good technical manager, you know, like let's say an engineering manager, the amount of change in the way that you deal with people and scaling and communication between a project 20 years ago and today, there is some change for sure. The world's changed, but it's not nearly the amount of change as in the tech stack. So you got to a point in your career where you're starting to think, you know, I'm kind of tired of just having to relearn all the time just to keep up. I'm not really building on everything I learned in the past still being valuable. You know, I'm losing that. That's a sunk cost. If that starts to frustrate you, moving into management might be in your future. 
So have you seen any of these signs in your own career that maybe it's time to consider moving into management? If not, what's holding you back? You know, why are you still on the fence? What are some of the things you're worried about if you chose to go this direction? Leave me some comments and let's talk about it. Until next time, thanks.